Hey Pretty Girl Club! This is probably going to be a long ass video, but today I'm going to talk about how I social climbed into over a dozen jobs. So we've been talking a lot about social climbing on this channel. I personally have developed a social climbing strategy for almost every area of my life, and social climbing is very important. A lot of people who get jealous of MLS women, what they're really jealous of is the fact that you're able to use your pretty privilege or your mixed race privilege or whatever to social climb. So when I use the term social climb, by the way, there is no right or wrong destination. I think that everybody has different goals. By the way, if you hear stuff in the background, I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm not by myself right now, but you have to start thinking about what your goals are socially. What do you want your socioeconomic status to look like? Do you want to be wealthy? Do you want to be a CEO? Maybe you want to be a business owner. Maybe you want to be a wife or a mother. Wanting those things and then working your way into those things, that's actually a form of social climbing. So today I'm going to talk about how I social climbed in my careers. So let's start all the way from the beginning. My very first job was working as a grocery store bagger. And that was when I was a teenager. And the way that I got that job was because in my local neighborhood, there was this grocery store that I would always go to. And me and my mom and my grandma, we ended up becoming friends with the people who worked at the store. And then as soon as I became old enough to work, I was able to get a job there. So that's the first example of social climbing. It was just being friendly with the person who was in charge at that job. So my second job was McDonald's. So the fun fact about me working at McDonald's is this is when I was about maybe 17 to about 19 years old. I worked there for about a year and a half. And I noticed when I worked there that because I would come into the McDonald's, I was, I've always been very carefree. I've always been very into like fashion and beauty and makeup and stuff. So I would come into the McDonald's with my hair done and my makeup done and my little nails painted. I was just living my best 17 year old life. But I noticed that the older people who worked at the McDonald's, they were like maybe in their 30s and stuff, they would be mean to me and kind of bully me because in their eyes, I was like this annoying teenager who worked there. So I remember one time I was working in the front at the McDonald's and then the manager at the McDonald's, let's call him Steve, he was this white guy. He was like, oh, Exoticals United, can you pick up that mess on the floor right there? And I was like, what mess? And he was like, this mess. And then he threw the bag of fries on the ground so that I could like pick it up. So they would do little bullying stuff like that because they saw that I was very like jovial and kind of carefree and they just didn't like my vibe. They felt like I had this entitled spoiled vibe. And I feel like deep down inside because they knew that I wouldn't be spending my life working at McDonald's, they wanted to kind of humble me or bully me while I was there. But honestly, I was able to survive at that job for like a year and a half I still came in every day with like a positive attitude have you ever been around people who literally get mad when you're like happy they get mad when they see that you have a positive attitude they get mad when they see that you're like young and full of hope um, there were a lot of instances where I worked at McDonald's where the ladies would try to be mean to me or they would try to like assign me extra work and stuff but I just kept that job and I used my McDonald's job so that I could spend that money on buying like designer jeans and designer bags. And I actually had a strategy with my McDonald's money. So my 17 year old self was preparing for college and I knew that I was gonna be applying to college and moving to, to like a new city. And so I knew that when I first got to college that I may not have a job, so I may not be able to buy all the clothes and stuff that I wanted. So my senior year in high school, I was working at McDonald's so that I could spend that money on getting like true religion jeans. That's when those were like in style. I was spending my money on getting makeup and stuff and like getting jewelry and stuff so that once I arrived on the college campus, I would be good. I would be looking my best. I have always used fashion and beauty as a method of social climbing because I understand the psychology behind the clothes you wear and the way that you carry yourself. And you know, I was raised in that sort of environment where it's like you always want to carry yourself with some form of class and you want to have some personal style and that will help you to kind of get ahead and stand out. So for that year and a half that I worked there, I used all of that McDonald's money so that I can get all of the clothes that I needed, all of the shoes that I needed, and all of my stuff for college. 
And so by the time I arrived at college, I was ready to go. Like all, my wardrobe was on point. My makeup was on point. I had all my Mac makeup and stuff. This is back when Mac makeup was like a really big thing in the 2010s. So I was ready for college because I had invested that McDonald's money into myself because I knew once I moved to a big city, like once I get out of this small suburban hometown that I live in, I'm I'm going to the big city. So it's like you kind of have to do more to stand out. I can't just wear these kind of country bumpkin, you know, basic soccer mom looking outfits when I'm living in a big city. Like, no, I want to be that exotical that stands out, not the one that blends into the background. So that was my other method of social climbing. It was using my money that I had to kind of like splurge on the things that I knew I wouldn't be able to afford later on. I was not very good at saving back then. I kind of wish I would have saved more money, but thankfully I'm a hard worker, so I've always had jobs. So I ended up going to college. You guys know that I went to an HBCU, and I ended up being able to get a job in college as a freshman. So this was my first professional job. I got a public relations job working in the career services center at the college. So this was a pivotal moment in my life because by working a PR job in the career center, so the career centers at colleges are like, this is what helps the students get jobs. This is what helps alumni get jobs. They throw all of the job fairs. They plan all of those events. They have different people come in from like Deloitte and like JP Morgan and all of these really professional places. And they are usually recruiting minorities or they are like kind of teaching you how to succeed in the job market. And so because I was able to get this job partially based on how I dressed and how I carried myself, because when I was in college, I was always dressed very like professionally and very like nice and, you know, wearing skirts and dresses and feminine classy clothing. And so wearing that feminine classy clothing and then knowing how to carry myself in interviews, that's what helped me to land that PR job. But anyway... Throughout the time that I had in this job, I learned about marketing, I learned about event planning, I learned how to create flyers, I learned how to promote events, and then on top of that, I had professional training on how to go through a job interview, how to get every job that you apply for, how to properly apply for a job, how to network. And so I learned at that job to always be looking for opportunities because that that job in the career center It taught me that there's an abundance of opportunities out there. You just have to find them and you have to know where to look and you have to know where to go. You have to know where like the job fairs are and you kind of have to know the right people. So I learned to always be looking for opportunities and always be socializing and meeting new people and doing my passions, even if I wasn't getting paid at first. So at that time, I had an interest in fashion and I was doing modeling stuff. Um, so my next job that I ended up working was at Starbucks. So I got a full-time job there at Starbucks and I liked the schedule there because I could start work at 4.30 AM and then I can get a whole shift in before I started classes. And then in the evenings, I was able to do castings and rehearsals for fashion shows, or I was able to do internships in the evenings. So I kept doing these fashion shows on the side. I learned more about event planning and photography and videography and, and kind of like the behind the scenes of like how to do the styling, how to do makeup, how to do nails. I was just kind of diving into my passions on the side, even if I wasn't getting paid for them, because this was my way of like filling myself up. I knew that on the surface... I was broke as fuck. I was working at Starbucks or like working these $9 an hour jobs. So I knew that if I didn't do my passions in my spare time, then that's all I would ever be, would be the barista at Starbucks. And so it was really important for me to at least be practicing my passions and like still filling my own cup, even if I wasn't getting paid for it. I've noticed that a lot of people, they they want to pressure you to like only do stuff if you get paid. And I do agree that after a certain point, you should only do things where you get paid. But in order to build yourself up to be able to attain the money, you have to gain some sort of experience somewhere. That's like saying, I want to be the next Beyonce and make Beyonce money. And you've never even sang a song ever in your life. You know what I mean? Like these people that are very successful now, people like Beyonce, she was singing for free when she was a child because she was just practicing, right? She was still growing. She was still, you know, kind of working her way up. And then once she reached a certain level, then she could start charging the big bucks. So anyway, at that time when I was still working at Starbucks and still in college and still broke every single day, and I learned this from the PR job, every day I was going online, Googling job opportunities, casting calls, modeling opportunities, 
internship opportunities, diversity opportunities, because sometimes people are looking for, you know, a black person, a Latin American person, etc. And so because of this, I was able to get both paid and unpaid work. So I used the unpaid modeling work to build my portfolio. And then I started an Instagram page. This was like back in the beginning of Instagram, back in the very beginning of like the Instagram modeling era. This was kind of like when Tumblr was still a thing. And then it was like kind of transitioning to Instagram. And I also started my first YouTube channel at that time when I was 19. And I was talking about my own interests. So mainly fashion and stuff like that. So due to my fashion and marketing background and my eagerness to social climb, I was able to get all sorts of unpaid opportunities. So I'm talking like I was able to get cast in runway shows. I was able to like be in hair shows or get free stuff. Um, I even got to start doing writing because I was passionate about that and I still am to this day. So I started being able to write articles for different uh, people like USA Today. I got an opportunity with them. I got to write for like all kinds of kind of more famous blogs back in the day when blogs were like a thing. And then... With all of my writing work that I was able to do, I was able to use that writing work to intern at online magazines or, or just do different unpaid internships. I also was doing the college campus news station. I was doing the college campus radio station, and I was becoming kind of well known on my college campus. So all of this was a part of my social climbing strategy. I was constantly thinking every single day. Like, I am not going to spend the rest of my life as a barista. I'm not going to spend the rest of my life as just the McDonald's girl. And so anyway, I ended up becoming kind of well-known. And from there, people began thinking of me when it came to mentoring opportunities or different opportunities in general, because they naturally saw me as like a leader and a go-getter. So this is how I began speaking on panels. And panels are like when they have people come and do debates or they have people come and give a speech about something or, you know, they they want you to talk about a specific thing. So for me at the time, I was very into I was still into like church. Um, I talked about like how women should have high standards and morals, actually kind of similar stuff to what I'm talking about now on YouTube. And so people found that to be controversial back then. I'm not sure why, but I was able to start getting on panels and stuff like that. And then, because I was able to be on the panels, I got hired by my college administration to help with the freshman orientation because they saw me as kind of like this mentoring type of person. So when I was one of the mentors, I was purposely singling out freshman girls to become friends with them, and I would spill all the tea, and I would like, you know, tell them everything they needed to know. I was genuinely trying to help the freshman girls, and so because of that, I became quote-unquote popular, I guess, with the freshman girls. They saw me as like a sister, and they were like, oh my gosh, Exoticals United, you know, so from there, I kept getting invited to do things like pageant makeup, or paint people's nails, or do, do other beauty work for people, help Helping with events and stuff and this is because people knew me and they just liked me so then I had another friend that noticed that I was everywhere on campus and just locally as well and he wanted me to be his PR person so I was able to book a contracted marketing gig working for him and by the way he was like a poli sci major and he was very good at grant writing so he got awarded a grant and he partially paid me with the grant money so he, so that he could do like his political stuff in the city. Fun fact, he ended up becoming a high level government official after college, but I was able to use my skills, even the stuff I didn't get paid for, I was able to use those things to kind of build up a name for myself or to kind of like be seen and make myself visible. And that was how I was able to get the paid opportunities. It's because I was visible. So that's why it's like, even though you don't want to just put yourself everywhere and put yourself in places where they don't deserve you, I still am very much a huge proponent of MLS women making themselves as visible as possible. Because let's say you're very pretty or whatever, you're not going to receive any pretty privilege if you stay hiding in your room or if you never try out for that modeling thing or if you never do that performance or you never do that pageant or whatever. So anyway... With all of my new connections that I had and the long list of experience that I had, this was how I started getting recruited for fashion shows and beauty events and just all kinds of other events. 
So that was how I was able to do like hair shows, runway shows, and eventually I got to start helping with coordinating these fashion shows and putting on these events and helping with the styling of the other models. And, you know, I used to see other models who looked like me and I would often give them my extra clothes that were too small for me, but maybe they looked cute on them. And this made people really like me because I was naturally just very giving and very generous. So I was unintentionally social climbing by helping others and doing my passions. And even though I wanted to make money, I wasn't only motivated by money. I was happy doing it because I just loved doing it. Another thing that helped me to social climb and switch careers whenever I wanted to was I always kept in contact with the people that I had worked with and stuff. And I always, I always showed support whenever they were successful. So for example, when I was working as a barista, I still liked looking cute. So the Starbucks that I uh, worked in, it was in a wealthy part of town and I was still very nice to everyone. I didn't view it as, oh, these people think they're better than me or like, fuck these people. No, I was always nice to everybody. And one of the guys that used to come into the Starbucks I worked at, he was an MLS man, an older man who worked as a lawyer. He thought that I was Creole and he would often say like flirty things to me in French. But through being his acquaintance, he inspired me to start applying for jobs and internships in politics. And before long, I was able to get an internship with a local news station. So at that point, I was doing 70 hour work weeks and sometimes 80 if I added my own passions like modeling, hairstyling, and things like that. Everybody talked shit about me working 40 hours a week for free, but I was doing my passions all the time, so I was still like happy. I was doing production stuff, filming stuff, researching things, journalism. Um, I was doing case studies on different things, so I didn't see it as work. I had a positive attitude. So by the end of college, I had a job secured at this news station because they saw my work ethic before. So... Long story short, I ended up deciding I no longer wanted to work at that news station or even live in that city, and I wanted to go back to my hometown. So because my mom is very high up in the medical field, she helped me to social climb into working in the public health sector. So the public health sector often worked with local universities, and so I put those events that I coordinated on my resume, and I switched to working at universities. So I was able to kind of pivot to something else. And then my aunt, my mom's sister, happened to start a business that ended up generating over a million dollars, but she desperately needed help running the business. So because I had a background in a bunch of cool stuff and because I was very consistent with always doing what I wanted to do, always doing my passions, always hustling, always, you know, doing it just for myself, not to impress others, um, but just because I loved what I was doing. And I also knew how to get my bags. So because of that, my aunt hired me to help her with payroll and administrative stuff, filing taxes and other organizational stuff. And then when my aunt was gaslighting me too much, this is after about six months or so, because you know how family businesses can be where it's like you're expected to work more than a regular person. Anyway, so I decided to go into finance for real. So I started watching videos about QuickBooks, bookkeeping, and then I was applying for jobs just to practice my interview skills and see what kinds of questions they would ask during the interviews. I think a lot of people get discouraged if they face one rejection because they feel like, oh, well, maybe I'm not cut out to do it. You're always going to get rejected. So this is why I laugh when guys try to say like, oh, you're going to hit the wall or, oh, you got your N-word wake up call. It's like somebody's always going to reject you. So why would I allow one rejection to stop me from doing whatever the fuck I want to do? Like this is my life. I am in charge of my own life. Anyway, so some of the interviews that I went through for finance, they would be very technical and I would fail at them and I would get rejected. But it helped me to learn what I needed to work on. So I was able to watch videos about QuickBooks because I knew that that's really what they wanted knowledge on. And then I ended up getting my first actual finance job as a financial coordinator at a local school. So they hired me at this school because I had previously worked at universities and because I had previously done finance stuff for my family business and for those universities. So do you see how I kind of social climbed from public health to working in universities to working in finance to working at a school in finance? So I kind of social climbed my way into that role and then from there, I was able to learn about other things like reconciliation, printing checks. And because a lot of people like to throw their jobs on you, um, 
I, I would immediately add those things to my resume as a new skill and I would immediately apply for jobs the same day. So it's like, oh, okay, the accountant is throwing his job onto me. Guess what? I'm putting that shit on my resume today and I'm applying for a new job today. So I would literally apply for jobs and it would be directly correlated to how many times I got annoyed at my current job. So it's like, you pissed me off four times today, I'm applying for four jobs today. You pissed me off 12 times today, I'm applying for 12 jobs today. You only pissed me off one time today, okay, I'm only applying for one other job today. So I always have this mindset of like, what's the next best thing? Because I understand that other people, if you're not benefiting them, they will drop your ass, they will leave your ass in the dust. And I got tired of feeling like I was kind of behind or feeling like, you know, other people were always social climbing and I wasn't. Because remember, I come from that very wasp background where I come from like, you know, those types of people from Gossip Girl. I don't know if you've ever seen that show. That is very reflective of the type of background that I'm from. So I've literally seen people go from nobodies to literal multimillionaires or seeing them go from nobodies to being like famous or, you know, being very successful. And I understand partially how they did it. It's because they had that mindset of constantly looking for opportunities, constantly looking for ways to do their passions and just to get their hands dirty. So for example, with me, I originally started off doing runway modeling or whatever. So even if I wasn't doing the fashion show, or even if I didn't want to do that particular fashion show, I would still find a way to have my hand in that industry somehow. So whether it was doing makeup in the background or doing styling in the background, same thing goes with like journalism type of stuff or film and production. If I wasn't the one hosting it on camera, I would find some way to be behind the camera. So I'm still involved in the field that I wanted to be in. And it's funny because I actually see a lot of actors doing this type of thing, like in Los Angeles. Let's say they didn't get cast in the movie. Well, they will try to be an extra in that movie. They'll try to be like the stagehand in the background. If they didn't get into the Broadway show, they'll try to be like maybe a makeup artist or somebody on the side doing something else. So that's how a lot of people are able to kind of get their way into higher status and higher success. No, it's not just because of pretty privilege. It's not just because of white privilege or whatever. It's because they're doing what I call privilege stacking. So it's like, okay, I may not have had the privilege of getting this job right now, but I do have the privilege of my current network. So how can I network so that I can then stack that networking privilege and then use the networking privilege to attain you know, this other privilege of being an accountant. So that was how I was able to switch so many jobs. So I've done everything from like accounting to working in the health administration field slash public health field, working at universities. And now I work for myself because I just said fuck it to the entire nine to five job life. But I'm only telling you guys this because I'm trying to give you guys examples of how you can hopefully social climb because Social climbing, in my opinion, it should be totally based on whatever your passions are. And I think you should always be doing your passions or be as close to doing your passions as you can. So let's say you're a singer and let's say you tried out for some record label or something and you didn't get the part or you didn't get the job. Well, can you do songwriting in the background? Can you be one of the producers, one of the engineers in the background? Can you like make beats or something? Can you be an assistant to the person who is the singer? Because even if you are not like the star in that moment, you're still going to learn stuff that can help you to become that star later on. Anyway, I hope this video was helpful to you guys. I'm definitely going to make follow-up videos on this. Let me know what you think in the comment section, and I'll talk to you next time. Stay pretty, ladies.